and welcome to Slate on Slate. This is my beautiful wife, Leslie. I'm my beautiful self, Keith. And as you can tell, we've done a back-to-back -back video because we haven't changed. I want to plug my upcoming book, The House of Ribbons, which is due out, like, just super soon. You, if you wanted to pre-order it, you'd have to time travel back to the 1800s and then send a letter to yourself in uh, 2021 to say, hey, pre-order that. I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. Today's episode is how to get motivated to write. Hell yeah. So let's go ahead and get started off. So, Boom, let's get motivated. <laughs> so one of the pet tips they say is to set writing goals. So you set writing goals when you first started writing, which was? All right, so I'll tell you what I do. Uh, not everybody does this. Uh, I started uh, the, the, uh, the first day I was able to sit at the computer and not be in pain after I had a, a, a very extensive shoulder surgery and rebuild uh, uh, I wrote on a piece of paper what the date was and my goal was to write my friend said just write 200 words and I wrote a thousand and then the next day I was like let me get a 1100 and then I built from there and my, my main goal is always 1000 minimum very hard on myself if I don't get that thousand but it's I like to hit that 3000 that being said, everybody was different. And, and there's a lot of days where I only- Crap happens. Yeah, it should happen. When we got kids, you know, I got twin 14 year olds and I got a one and a half year old. And uh, I mean, we like to set our date nights. So sometimes I can only get a couple hundred words in because uh, I've just effed around all day long, doom scrolling on the news, watching YouTube, YouTube toy videos. Uh, I got buddies that have other YouTube videos. Uh, but that's another video. So there, yeah. so one is set goals. Another one yeah. is to set deadlines. So you want to have yeah. a you, chapter done. You want to have some kind of goal. Maybe it's like, uh, like I'm a huge yogurt fan. I love yogurt. Sometimes I won't, you know, if I want that yogurt, I'd be like, okay, I got to lay something really out. Even if it's just in notes, because I count notes as a word count too. It's all about staying motivated because I've seen people lose motivation and where I see it, I see it in places I don't like. I see people break up and then they just lose the will to write. And I'm like, you can't, man. The writing has to be, for me, it has to be like a lover. You need to make love every night. You know what I'm saying? Get to those keyboards. Do that. Make love. Do it all the time. Uh, we got a buddy. It's been, what, a year? He hasn't written since a year. He hasn't gotten over that breakup. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? Okay? You're screwing yourself. He's 20 years younger than me, so he's got all the time in the world. No, he could be hit by a bus tomorrow, and I just said that to him yesterday. You know, stay motivated. Stay positive. So another one is, is right now, edit later. When you're writing, and then it, it comes up red because the word is wrong, because I'm not a great speller, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I spiel wrong all the time. Uh, you know, but I know I'll do good later. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, if you stop and correct all those right away, oh man, it's gonna eat up a lot of time. My first book, I did that constantly. I have obsessed with fiction of that. Because, you know, I'm a neatness freak and it translates to the page. Just skip all that shit. Just let it flow out. You can read it. That means you can edit it. And I'm telling you, editing and revising, oh man, it's one of my most favorite parts because you're just there to lay the bones. Okay, throw the DNA out there. Pow! Aha, right there, there's a DNA, okay? Then when you edit and you revise, you, 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 you build it up, the bones, the tendons, all that other bullshit until you got your body of work. Now, see, you thought I was being funny, but I really wasn't. Uh, and the editing will seriously bog you down. It'll make you whittle yourself down. Don't do any of that shit until you got your, there's a, or edit every one or two chapters, okay? Don't whittle yourself down. You're not there to do that. You're there just correct the writing mistakes couple of comments here and there just remember use the word but throw a comment be uh, comma before it next one is find a good writing place a comfy writing yeah i am a super place. creature of habit uh i my desk has to look the same literally the same i don't like my office touched at all i got beautiful children but i want you to stay out of my office your area should be comfortable Okay. Should be like your bed. If you like your bed messy, hey, shoot, leave that shit messy. messy. If you're like me, I like to make my bed as soon as I get up in the morning. Not always. Okay. You're looking at because I, I, I literally, I did this. This is my bedroom away from my bedroom downstairs because we have a fully developed uh, uh, basement, which is actually the first floor. But 
I like everything the same all the time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it's comfortability breeds productivity. Uh, Which brings us to the next one is um, find a, a comfortable writing time. Commit yeah. to a regular writing schedule. Okay. So, and I, 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 I spent like three seconds looking this up on the internet. No, this is real. So back in the day, there used to be a goddess named Nyx, N-Y-X, Okay. And uh, from her, uh, oracles are born. Her mother is literally the universe itself, chaos, uh, Greek uh, uh, history. And so when writers would give their thanks, they would give their thanks at night to Nyx because the nighttime, the moon itself breeds a creativity because Nyx literally is the blackness of space. It is the shadow in the corner of your room. It breeds this creativity. How can I prove that to you? How many times have one of you just been sitting there in the dark and you swear you saw something move? Did you? Who knows? Multiverse, baby, it's some crazy shit out there. I've seen some nutty things. Or was it your imagination? If it's your imagination, that's coming from the creative part of your brain. So when you see, you know, uh, clothes on a chair and it looks like a scary clown who's coming to get you, that's your imagination doing that. Harness that imagination. If you're afraid of something, if you have a real fear, try to master that fear. Because if you're writing, you can put that in there. Now I have certain fears that are that, that are gripping. They grip me. Uh, I had learned, I had seen a video, and a young man was talking about uh, an accident. He had gotten hurt. He was a soldier like me overseas and he got hurt. And this is right after I got my, my surgery and it deeply touched me because it, it paralleled my own life. Uh, and I had spent, what was it, a three month recovery? Mm -hmm. It was a pretty bad, I mean, this is really, there's a lot of work front and back. Um, I had fantasized about what I was gonna write in my book and I got into the deeply emotional scenes and I used the fears that I had to translate that uh, just to see if when I come back and read it, would it, frighten me would it push me move me emotionally and then when it came to my beta readers when it moved them when it pushed them when it made them uncomfortable and they didn't have those fears that's when I know I had done it right mm -hmm. I was 46 before I found out I had a talent now I know what you're thinking you have a talent you're beautiful as fuck thank you very much every one of you that that's it every one of you that acknowledged that I appreciate that but no for real I never really had a talent. Couldn't draw. I couldn't draw a square with a ruler, okay? <laughs> but I could write all day long about uh, a square. And where did I lose my motivation? I let a drunk girlfriend at one time with her, with our friend, kick me metaphorically in the testicles about my writing. And then she went outside and cheated on me. Am I upset about that? No, man. That actually helped me down the road right after I found out about that, just move on. Cause I was like, Pfft. when it comes to people doing shit like that, it's like a rug. You just take it outside, shake it out. There you go. Shake that shit off. But I did let that stifle my motivation writing wise. Uh, what was that? That was the toy that was next to you. Oh. oh. So the next thing that they have is to change your thought pattern. So if you get in a mood where you just can't do it, you need to change your thought pattern. That's why he doesn't just sit down and write at the computer. He sits and watches yeah. news. And if I have to, if I have to arbitrate an argument between my daughters, I try to put myself in the, the shoes of a fourteen-year-old because I remember what it's like being fourteen. Uh, it was a different time. So when I try to arbitrate I'm like hey man it's just the same problems you just got digital this and that and just don't call each other a bitch I don't like it uh if I am emotionally compromised because of it you know what I'm saying like I, I felt I had to take one side because she was right but it hurt the feelings of the other one I have a problem writing but uh, that's when I'll that's where I lose myself sometimes to uh you know I doom scroll I watch a lot of news I like to watch toy reviews I like to watch people who have big collections I like to watch people enjoying themselves. If you've got a YouTube channel and you're enjoying what you're doing, hey man, hit me up. I'll throw your subscription. I'll tell my friends about it simply because I'm big into helping the small community uh, in any way, shape or form I can. But you gotta be in the right mindset, man. You got a bad argument with somebody and you write, it will affect your writing in a way you won't realize till a year down the road. 
You want to keep that good mindset. You got to have that writer's mindset. So another one is to join a writer's group. I am not a people person. Imagine that. Yeah. But my wife will attest, I have a large group of friends and I can be inserted into any group because I'm not tooting my own horn. I have a high level of education. Uh, so, you know, I can go faux shizzy and then I can talk, uh, you know, uh, Roseburn, Roseburg, Roseburg, fucking, I'm trying to sound smart, it sounds stupid. Einstein Rosen theory, uh, which is a multiverse theory that Einstein and Rosen, uh, they came up in, it's the Einstein Rosen bridge. Uh, so I, I can do all of that only because of the way the family that I was a and I would later find out that I was adopted adopted into they when they would have their wine parties and bullshit like that these are all they're all you know professors and you know doctors and shit like that you know uh, so it just I was one of those guys I didn't talk a lot when I was young I, I used to listen to people and I have a voracious appetite for learning I love to learn then the next thing they have is if you have writer's block go ahead and take five so yeah. don't write don't, if you have writer's block don't beat yourself up don't push on a wall I tell this to my daughters all the time. You know what happens when you push on a brick wall? It's gonna fall down. But sometimes it rocks forward and then falls on you. And then you're, okay? So don't push that. Take a bubble bath. Do something you don't normally do. So, Take a 40 minute bath or shower. Do something that caters to you no matter what it is. What? 40 minute shower, <laughs> I was like. Well, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Take a long shower, but you which can take a long is, bath. Which brings us to the next one, which is change your setting. So if you're bogged down, get out of the room. Yes, uh, it's called feng shui. You can look that up. It's a completely different thing. Uh, sometimes you can, you know, you don't, I, I, I don't allow arguing in my office, man. I, I try to keep no, I try to keep the negative vibes away, uh, even when I'm the negative vibe. Uh, but sometimes you got to, hey, writer's block, there is a reason it happens, and a reason it happens to every single writer. It just says, hey, you got 20 minutes? Go take a nap. Yep. So It's the brain. The brain needs a relaxation time. So the next one is switch directions. So if you don't like where something's going and you can't figure out how to Take do a it, risk. Take a risk or go write something else. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. I, uh, when I was done with the third book, I had inspiration to write a children's book. And before I went into the re uh, editing and revising of book three, um, the House of Many Doors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wrote a children's book. And then, uh, uh, you know, it, the uh, the guy who owns the, uh, the editing company, he read it and he was like, this is really good. You should put this out. I wrote that just to get over a little bit of writer's block and this, that, and the other thing. And it's because you, you're limited. It's like Twitter back in the day. You're limited to so many words in a children's book. So the next thing is to reward yourself, and we've already talked about this, by setting new goals and then you reward yeah, yourself. Yeah, I like to reward myself with food. Uh, and then another one is to read a book, maybe just get your mind off your book and read another book. So the last thing that we want to talk about to get motivated is to remember why you actually got started yeah. writing. What do you want to do? Do you want to, for me, it was to complete a dream. It was my dream to be an author since I was 10. I hope that five years from now I can look back and just go, Jesus Christ, why did I grow that facial hair? And to be able to laugh to say my dream had come to a reality. You can't fail. If you sit down to write a story, do you know how you fail? Don't finish the story. Put it in a desk. You know, finish it because you are succeeding by doing this. Don't fail yourself. You don't have to publish it. We. When I say we, I always incorporate my wife, but me, I saved for years to do this. I was actually saving up for a sports car, and I thought to myself, how selfish would that be? You know, I get this little badass two-door uh, sports car. And I thought to myself, you know what? My biggest dream has always been to write. And here I am laid up with my shoulder, and I'm like, I'm going to drop X amount of 40 grand on a sports car. And I'm like, no, you know what? Why don't I just complete a dream? Give something to my children, something that, that they can say, hey, the old man wrote this a long time ago, and maybe I'll be good at it. And come to find out, that's what I found out I was good at. And so, uh, you know, did I get off track again? No. So that is all we have for you today. So if you like our content, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button below. <laughs> also, if you want to... Drop a comment. Any kind of comment you want, no matter what, you know? And if you like, uh, if you want to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr um, to find out more updates on the books, our future videos coming out. Um, you can do 
hit the links below. And that is all we have for you today. Bye. Bye.